Well, you heard the lawyer there. Different arguments, different prayers brought to court. Arnak was a party. Labor Party and Mr. Pidobi went to court. Uh, Bolatino Budi, uh, the president-elect, also was at his own prayers that he took to the to uh, to, to that tribunal, the petition tribunal. To, uh, and what came out of it gets us talking tonight. The implication of that, the import of that. Does it affect the governorship election? What does this mean for the chances of Peter Obi and the Labour Party in challenging the outcome of the election? And of course, the integrity of Nigeria's election. Let's get talking. I'm going to bring you one of the, those who ran in that race and the leader of one of the political parties, or equally a lawyer. So he's bringing to bear so many, uh, he's wearing so many hats. I mean, hats. Uh, he has a big one, so he's representing all the hats that we might be, <laughs> we might be needing him uh, to speak on tonight. Mr. Uh, Dan Wanyawu is a Zenith Labour Party presidential candidate and the national chairman of the party, equally a lawyer. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Thank you for having me. I don't know why you're always in love with my heart. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like a cowboy hat, though. Uh, it's not a cowboy hat. I've been wearing this since 83. You are, you, I mean, you, 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 you told me about that, the hat. <laughs> well, interesting. So fascinating, too. Uh, let's get talking. Let me first and foremost get your reaction. Uh, to um, to the ruling of the court today, the outcome of uh, the position of the court. I monitored the judgment up to late earlier afternoon mm -hmm. before I left. Mm -hmm. I had the judgment right here now. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get because I left my office. I've been in a meeting, and uh, there was no communication until I got here. You saw how yeah. I exclaimed mm -hmm. when I said, "Ah, what happened? What happened?" <laughs> well. My reaction is this. Once you are dissatisfied with the process of an election or its results, it is settled that you are entitled to all the essential materials used for that election mm -hmm. to prove your case, bring your evidence and your facts. That is settled. If you check all the, all the election petition cases, uh, courts are unanimous on that. I had in mind that there was no way the petitioners would not be given the opportunity to look at the sensitive materials used in the election. We listened to the lawyer, mm -hmm. to one of the petitioners. Uh, we didn't hear the other side. That's why I said, let me read the judgment. As a lawyer, I have to read the judgment. Uh, there, may be, there may be some conditionalities attached to it. He's saying that the prayer of INEC was not granted and the other one was refused. Uh, but your intro, uh, you said INEC has been allowed to reconfigure, to the, reconfigure beavers. the beavers. If the reconfiguring of the beavers will not tamper with the uh, beavers as per the information it had, and that's why I said I have to read the judgment of the court. You, you know, beavers has a lot of information. It has a memory, and it's like your phone. You put it off, by the time you put it on, messages start coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it will hamper, or it will not hamper the getting of inf information regarding the election, its conduct, votes by units, how it was uh, transmitted, uploaded, as we have seen now, then there won't be problem with that. But if configuring it will affect the, the information required by the petitioners, then there is every need for us to worry. If I like is to configure it now because of the election, then probably if we had the opportunity to speak, we would have said, okay, let us shift this election for a week or two. We still have a window to accommodate that, to enable all the petitioners have access to the information they require to prosecute their petition. So. Part of the prayers and the fear of INEC is if you do not allow us to reconfigure because the same beavers were, were used for the presidential election are going to be used for the governorship election and perhaps the window of the two weeks gap so INEC can put its, its house in order and get ready for the next election. But the court said you can reconfigure the, uh, the beavers. The, so part of the argument of INEC or the court today is that, look, we have a server that can that houses all of this information, and it will be made available to the court. Now, 
Um, that is the position. Uh, historically speaking, can you give us your view about how you think this is going so far? Well, I don't want to be speculative or anticipatory of uh, the tribunals and the courts, but I know that you cannot prevent a petitioner access from having vital information he required, whether it is the beavers, whether it is the server, in his own opinion, will help him prosecute his petition. And it is important, I say it again, that I must have to read the judgment. There may be other conditions. You know, you journalists will just take the summary or the highlights. There may be other things there, other conditions given in configuring the reconfiguring the, the, the beaver's machine. So as a lawyer, I have to read. I don't want to talk in abstract. If you bring me back here tomorrow, I will be able to satisfy you on this. I have to read that judgment this night. And I mean, that, that's, that, that's, no, uh, that's not an issue. I mean, uh, every lawyer should be able to uh, discuss or argue based on the fact. I, I didn't hear the judges. I yeah, told you I absolutely. just had it here. And I, and I, I, I have not read I, it. I, I, I don't I, want to talk in abstract. I totally but I if you bring me you. back tomorrow, <laughs> I will tear. I will, I will, I will, I will, inter I will interrogate the, absolutely. the, the judgment. So let's talk about the outcome of the election, yes. the process, the yes. conduct. What are your views about what when you participated in the process, the outcome of this election? Give us your view of how things went down. I want to say honestly that the, there were a lot of problems. There were issues across the states, like in any other election. I, I, would be, I would be deceiving myself if I said that everything went well. And you recall, uh, I had to speak after the chairman of IPAC spoke during the coalition. And I made our views very clearly. In every election, you have people who will never allow things to work the normal way. Sheung, let me start with the beavers. Beavers, there is nothing wrong with the beavers machine. It is the way to go. But something is wrong with people operating the beavers. It's in this climb, in this country. I've always said it. I don't know the kind of people God put here and their hearts, their minds, that nothing will work. I next suffered with the political parties to get this in place. We interrogated it, top to bottom, front to back. And we said, Beavers is the way to go. At least Beavers has shown you that money politics cannot work. Beavers has shown you that how many places did you hear they carry ballot boxes, apart from the touts and the talks that did so in other places? Beavers will authenticate and you see people who will attempt to bypass the beavers. So the problem we had was with the professors and those and they put in the states. They betrayed the Anak chairman. They betrayed him thoroughly. They allowed themselves to be hijacked by the governors in the states and they started taking their dictates. I'm not saying don't follow them for their own life. Follow them. But when you come back, put an affidavit, this thing was done under duress. We have taken care of that in the Electoral Act. We have taken care of that in the Electoral Act. Don't put your life in danger. Do as they wish. But immediately you are out of danger, inform the INEC. Look at what happened, look at what happened. INEC had just canceled an election of uh, the major leader in, in a, yeah. in a, uh, yeah. as a result of obtaining okay. results under duress. The INEC uh, official says that uh, he announced the result under duress. Good. And so what INEC stopped says... these professors for doing that? And INEC chairman, by the time he discovered it, it was too late. If you listen to me during the collation, I cited that was what I was talking about when I said when Jesus Christ was here as a person, he had only 12 disciples. One betrayed him. Now you have 37. Expect 10 to be free. I was referring to this intel. So, so you, you see a situation where people will not let things work. Everybody's talking about beavers, beavers, beavers. There is no system today we have here that will be better than beavers. And what I did that day, I think I saved Nigeria's democracy because it was to collapse that very moment. Everybody was saying, cancel election, cancel election, don't let it go on. No, we can't go that way. 
We cannot pull down the house. We cannot pull down the roof because you did not win. I did not win. I was in the election. I saw myself by the time I bought my ticket that I was going to take over President Buhari as the next president of Nigeria. You told me but so. Yeah. I told you so. Yeah. God bless you. And it seems that it's not working that way. Should I then pull down the house and the roof? Because I, I saw myself as going to take over from Buhari, President Buhari, but it didn't, work, it, work, it didn't work like that. So I cannot pull out the house. So what I did was to provide an opportunity, a window, for those that are grieved to go this process they are going now. If I had not done that through IPAC, and that thing had collapsed that day, they would have opportunity. We had already said we don't want, we don't want interim governments. We don't want this. I, I brought a scenario to a friend just uh, when he confronted me on this. A professor too. I said, look, what if the election was cancelled, and the president was okay? This election was flawed as you want it, or as you wanted it. Now, council is start again. You people will come up with the argument. We don't want the same chairman to conduct it. The president puts another and a chairman. The other chairman, after one week, will talk to Nigerians. And next six months, I need one year to tidy this up. Then you go on the street. We don't want it. You must do it now. You are getting to interim government, or you are getting to unconstitutional change of government. People should think and work with intels on what is happening. So I can pride myself that day that I saved this democracy. And when people are speaking, they should speak with understanding. I have told you, I was a runner. Look at all the elections coming. Somebody just but, few but, minutes. But can you compare yourself to the likes of Bala, uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar, who polled uh, well over 6 million votes, and Peter Obi, who polled uh, about the same figure, and no, won no. several states? You didn't win any state. No, no, no. But, I, I no, mean, no. Your, your stake and theirs might not be exactly the same. No, no, that's based on the report, that, the result they are challenging. You see, as far as we went to the race, mm. we are on the same platform. We are on the same platform. You, as we have seen it, maybe in course of interrogating the results, those who are not in court may have votes in their favor. Through of us, mm -hmm. it might happen. So no matter the level or the stake you have, Nigeria must exist before the position you are looking for. Don't get me wrong. Everything was not right with the election. Let's, but I do not want yeah. a situation where we lose this democracy that mm. we have done for more than two we days. We have an election in just about two or three days. Uh, that, those are the governor's elections. Uh, let's look at the things that went wrong with the hope of, I mean, and I'm very certain that a lot of INEC officials are watching and a lot of stakeholders are watching tonight. Let's have the, uh, the, the, the mindset to say these are the wrong things and where INEC and Nigeria can get it right. Can you give us an understanding? You said Beavis was working, but there are those who betrayed the INEC chairman by working with fifth columnists in, uh, uh, so, uh, I, mean, I mean, subverting the process. But what are the other issues that you think that needed to be tackled? What were the other things that went wrong? You see, we're talking about transmission of results. Mm -hmm. That was part of their concern. What do you but, think but I was there? I was shocked mm -hmm. where I voted. I was there. The result was transmitted. In your presence? In my presence. I saw it. And it was confirmed. And it was confirmed. So it was when I got to Abuja that I started hearing that they did not transmit. Maybe I was lucky. And the, or that, maybe that has to do... Because first, there are two processes in transmitting the result. The result, the result has to first and foremost when it's taking it a picture done. taking... It was just, done. Just a moment, sir. If it's, a picture is taken on the wall as, as it's pasted, it has to be stored first. Yes. So when it is stored, it's, it's, it gives you the signal that it's been stored. Yes. Then when you get into a network area, then you can then transmit. In fact, when we or, have to transmit, we have done all that. Into the area of Potter? Yes. That was no network. We started moving. 20%, 30, 40, 60, 80, this, it went. Within the same compound, within the same school premises. The point is that those that betrayed the chairman didn't want it to work. Who are these people? The, 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 the professors he kept in the States. These are ad hoc officials? No, no, they're not. They're, they're what the ad hoc officers are doing. Are they uh, well, substantive INEX staff? No, no, no. You know, there were people, collection officers in the States. 
you have some of them in different local governments and wards. How they did it, how they arrived at this, because before the election, we had agreed with INEC that this is the way to go. And I must say that I am yet to accept that Professor Mahmoud, people will attack that Professor Mahmoud was involved in this. He gave us all assurances. We asked all questions. He said, uh, we even suggested, shall we postpone if anything it was not ready? Go and ask all the political parties. He told us that he had done this thing. He has put everything he had on this project for two years. I cannot sabotage it at the 11th hour. Could it be that he overpromised and underdelivered? No, no, no. He was ready to deliver. But those, you see, next thing, we will not, with respect to that, due respect to the professors, I don't think we are to have them again. Let us have, let us, if professors that are credible, there are some that are credible, we have them. But there are many, if you see what is coming out now, you, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. Why? Why destroy all the job we have done for two years? And now you want to crucify the man at the head. Of course, the book ends on his desk, no doubt about it. But you have to give benefit of the doubt. I'm sure you had the result of their meeting, their, their meeting with the resident commissioners Thursday, Friday last week. He admonished them, told them his mind. But do you think he could have done anything better in the manner of handling the situation, the crisis at the time? I told you that before he realized it, it was too late. Were you in communication with him? No, that's my intel. And I say so. Shewun, on the 20th, did I not say this thing will happen? Only AIT arrives, and maybe you carried it. The press shut it down. I said the transmission of result will be tampered with. Get back to the net. Go and verify. I said, and I expected the security and everybody to interrogate it. On the 20th of, 20th of last month, 20th of uh, February. Be February, before 25th, I addressed a press conference on this. I did. That, that critical infrastructure of INEC will be tampered with to stop the transmission of results to the server. I say so on the 20th. So I wasn't surprised. Press shut it down because that was not what they wanted to hear. In law, they said, you must always listen to the other side. Listen to the other side. Maybe after listening to the other side, you may have opportunity to change your mind. Let's take a pause. Uh, we'll take a break, and when we come back, there are other issues that you think uh, bedeviled that election. And ultimately, how can we get it better in the governorship election of next Saturday? Stay with me, everyone. More conversation about the outcome of today's court uh, ruling in the uh, uh, big court and the governorship election that we're looking forward to. And we'll return, everyone. We'll be right back. so much everyone for staying with us on the program tonight don't forget we've been following for you uh, some of uh, the pictures of what happened today in the court of appeal some of uh, uh were brought to you the sound bite of the lawyer to mr peter obi and some of what came out of that was that INEX request to vary the order granting mr peter obi of the labor party's access to inspect the beavers and other election materials which was dismissed by the court and annex request to configure beavers was granted. Um, another request was uh, that of uh, uh, Tunubu, Bola Tunubu of the APC to inspect election materials, which was also granted. And Peter Obi's request to inspect beavers and other materials was granted. Chief Dan Uwayanwo is a Zenit Labour Party presidential candidate and also the national chairman and also a lawyer has been speaking with us. Thank you so much indeed. Before we went on that break, you were analyzing some of the problems of the last uh, election, the presidential election. What are the other issues that you saw? Well, I, I think uh, you have the issue of disruption of voters. Some people were not allowed to vote. There were places they were shut out from voting. Some kind of voter suppression. Yes. Uh, uh, somewhere in Bruno, a whole area, a whole almost a senatorial zone was not allowed to vote. But you see, in this election we are going on Saturday, Shewon, it is a different election. When we say politics is local, 
This one on Saturday is the meaning of politics being local. IPAC has told INEC chairman that in the next election, you must use your best endeavors to ensure that our strategy for the election, as agreed, as provided by the law, is adhered to in total. On the other hand, if in the state assembly constituency, where some people were not allowed to vote, there was disruption in the area. What it means is that INEC will suspend the processes there, collect the results of the ones that voted, and then go back and reconduct election in those areas. Ditto in the governorship election. Mm -hmm. Unlike the presidential election, where you consider the people not allowed to vote, you consider the number of registered voters there, and it will not substantially change what you have, you can let it go. But it's not going to be the same thing in the election of Saturday, because it goes with simple majority, state assembly. Even though for governorship, you still have to make the requirements, spread. the spread in the local governments. So these are things we expect INEC to do and to monitor. And we are satisfied with the admonition to the Rex. Is we, that enough? No, but see, I told them that what happened in, from what we read, what happened in the last election should not repeat itself. So, but should INEC be engaging political parties? I mean, has there been any interface between INEC and political parties? You are a member, a leading member of IPAC, the Interparty Advisory Council. As, I called the political parties together to explain to them what went wrong. Yeah, you mean after, since after the election? After the since, after we since. met Anek that very day. All of us met Anek, Anek chairman. On the platform of the political parties? IPAC. IPAC, we held a meeting at our secretariat, but, then proceeded to ICC. But that was on the day that it was imagined that there were problems. But yeah. I'm talking about when INEC had sufficient information about what really happened. As INEC debriefed the political parties on what really went wrong. Now, apart from the meeting we had that day, we spent more than an hour with him. And the question was, what happened? What went wrong? That was our interaction with him. What was his response? Just. He, he, was, he was disturbed. He was terribly disturbed, I must tell you. His, his voice was like somebody who, who was stabbed at the back. And we saw that in him. I'm not speaking for him. All the comments political parties have made, including myself here, has been based, has been predicated on the fact that all of us have been involved in all these processes. He has always met with the parties every three months. He met with us twice before the election. And we asked critical questions, which he provided answers. And when this matter was on, we met him, because he couldn't leave the International Conference Center. After a meeting at uh, IPAC office, we went to him. We said, look, what went wrong? And we saw that the man was thoroughly betrayed. And he realized it too late. If there is one thing that INEC needs to work on ahead of the next election, what would that be? To ensure that the rule of engagement is kept to. Every resident electoral commissioner, everybody posted anywhere, must go strictly by the rules. Where there are objections to the rules or disruption of election, INEC has to do it again, no matter how many days it will take. IPEC, IPAC has already given INEC chairman this. This has been our understanding. And for those that did what they did, we have to now name and shame them if they continue in their practice. And I'm aware that some resident electoral commissioners are on suspension. I don't know if you're aware. One in Sokoto State. I learned that and of Abia. Yeah, it's also the, on suspension. The one in Sokoto, is, uh, he's been told to step aside. I, I, I learned uh, to one in Abia, and there are others that have been interrogated. So these are the things we had. But I know if you claim you won the election, Prepare your evidence. In 2007, when Governor Mimiko's mandate was stolen with Adam Sosho Mole, you recall, 
INEC then could not announce the results in Benin and in Akure. They announced the results in Abuja. What did we do? We collected all the results in every polling unit, part it word by word, and went to Justice Nabrume panel. He saw it and shook his head. There was a fault by the government then to change Justice Nabrume of uh, blessed memory. He refused. He gave us judgment. He restored the victory. On the other hand, he restored that of Adam Sochomole. They went to Justice Abdullahi's Court of Appeal, presented by Justice Abdullahi. He refused. We got the mandate. So let nobody kill himself. Prepare your documents. Election is won and lost at the polling unit, not on transmission, not on uh, collation and all that. Once you have those facts, there is no court in the land, no matter how compromised that court may be, that will not give you judgment.